Today I'd like to do a follow-up video to uh, what's been my most commented on, most uh, viewed video. That's the, the video on why people hate the alto clarinet. And I have my alto clarinet here. And I'd like to actually talk today about scoring for the alto clarinet in a wind band. We're not going to deal with orchestral scoring. That's really a different beast. And I can do a follow-up video on orchestral scoring for the alto clarinet if um, viewers request it. But today I'd like to just cover uh, the use in concert band. And in particular I'm going to talk about uh, the two pieces I've written that really have major alto clarinet parts in them. Um, in fact, I'll go back a little earlier than that. Uh, back when I was an undergrad, I was doing uh, some work transcribing a uh, piece by Mendelssohn, which you can actually find elsewhere on the channel, and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And that was Mendelssohn's Trower March. It was really an unknown piece when I found it. In fact, the band director at the university had never heard that Mendelssohn had done a second piece for band. And part of this is it's not a standard band instrumentation. It's not as well known as Mendelssohn's Overture. So what I did is I took uh, Mendelssohn's original and kept it as close to the original scoring as possible. And the clarinet section included two F clarinets, two C clarinets, and two basset horns. Well, obviously the F clarinets don't exist anymore. I can't even tell you when the last F clarinet was made, but I'm sure it's been over 100 years ago, if not 120 years ago. C clarinets, not a big deal. I've got one in the other room. Basset horns, uh, the school did not have basset horns, so but we did have alto clarinets. And so what I did is I just took the basset horns and did one for one, transposed them, and put them on alto clarinet. No bass clarinets. Mendelssohn didn't know the bass clarinet. And surprisingly, the sound of that clarinet section was so drastically different um, than the sound we typically hear. Six players and only two on a normal soprano clarinet. Two on alto and two on E flat to go to the high F clarinet parts. So that really got me thinking about, hmm, alto clarinet. Um, why do we not use it? And that's been, I think I did that in 2003, so that's been 13 years since I did that. And we performed it at the university, and it really it's just this incredible sound that you don't hear in modern band writing. Part of that is Mendelssohn was one of the greatest composers of all time. Uh, but then I started shying away from alto clarinet, particularly after I had a, a lesson with uh, David Maslanka, who you know I showed the score to and said, oh, you don't want to mess with alto clarinet, nobody plays it. So I said, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. If one of the you know most well-known band composers uh, alive says, yeah, don't mess with alto clarinet, and I, so I didn't. I did not include an alto clarinet part in one of my own band compositions until just about a year ago. Uh, I finished uh, my piece Omnia Exeunt in Mysterium. And I'll talk a little bit about the scoring I did there. The, the clarinet section has eight parts. Four B-flat clarinets, an alto clarinet, two bass clarinets, and a contrabass clarinet. The, the two bass clarinets I think is really kind of the key. It frees them up to do other stuff and the alto clarinet's just kind of sitting there in the middle. And throughout the piece I use the alto clarinet as more of a solo tenor alto voice and it it really kind of serves as the soloist of the section. Yes, there are solos in the, the B-flat clarinet and in the bass clarinet and a lot of times I'll also do it as a full quartet of alto, two basses, and contrabass. So I've got a low quartet and a high quartet. So it, it's really a bridge color. Uh, one of my favorite combinations in that piece is alto clarinet plus English horn. And it's a sound that I got from, uh, there's a fa fabulous passage in the first movement of Mahler's Second Symphony where you've got a long duet between English horn and bass clarinet. And that's, that's a, just this real sinuous sound. But if I put that on alto clarinet, it's a little, 
I'd say it's almost a little bit more refined because the Alto Clarinet has just a little bit brighter tessitura than the bass. And so I did a lot of scoring for that in there. And the Alto Clarinet uses full range. It goes, I think, into the Altissimo as well. And on a side note, I actually scored it for Alto and F, which is the basset horn. But of course, there's an alternate part in it for Alto and E flat. So I wanted a little bit lighter sound than the, the dark uh, E flat alto. Now, the other piece is Forest Dreams, and I am not finished writing that. But as of today, we're early in November 2006, I've got uh, 20 minutes of it fully scored, uh, complete, and the only thing left to put in it is the finale section. And this is really an unusual piece. It's the first piece that I've written after completing... Oops my uh, band orchestration textbook. Again, I'll put a link in the description below where you can buy that off of Amazon. And it really got me rethinking how to make up the band, in particular the clarinet section. And I've expanded the clarinet section, I've thought about it, and the clarinet section I'm using, and the, the piece is a large piece. And I know I'll get flack for, you know, being, being excessive, but the thing is, I can find players on all these instruments who would be absolutely willing to play the part. So, excessive, yes, but it's what the piece calls for. It's something I've been really wanting to write for over 20 years. And I'm finally in the final stages of finishing it. So the, the clarinet section I actually have one A-flat clarinet on top. Uh, hardest and rarest to find, but I actually know someone who is in the process of getting one. Uh, e flat clarinet, C clarinet, those two really work as the, the high notes, two B flats, and one on a part, only one B flat on a part, one A, two F altos, two bassets, and to differentiate it, I have two E flat altos, which I in the score call E flat tenors. And so they've got the role of two altos and two tenors, so they're actually in the piece four alto clarinets. Something unheard of. I love that I've got two basses, a contra alto, and a contra bass. So I actually can have a whole ensemble of eight low clarinets. Now there's a lot of units in playing when I want to have a much thicker sound. There is quartet playing. There's divided parts. I, there are parts where I have all eight of the low clarinets divided up. And there's some real intricate textures. Um, I'll talk just a little bit about what I do with the, the four altos. The, the two F altos and the two E flat tenors. And I, I use those terms um, not wantonly. You know, this is really a tenor instrument. It's, you know, with its range going down to low E and E flat. <laughs> That's a meaty low note. That's concert G flat. And so this, this instrument feels more like a tenor. The basset horn, the F alto with its smaller bore, favors the higher notes. So I use the, the two F altos as more solo instruments. I use the two E flat tenors as more harmony instruments. Now, that's not to say there are not solos for the alto, there are not harmony parts for the basset, but you get the idea. And it gives the whole core of the band a completely different sound than you hear by beefing up what is essentially the alto and tenor lines of the woodwind section. Whereas before, without that, I'd be relying on high bassoons, in tenor saxes and really nothing else would be filling in that inner sound but essentially what i've done is created a wind viola section and by doing that the sound of the woodwind section in this piece is completely transformed you go from having a bunch of high notes and a good strong bass to having a much more balanced group so this is, this is not something a standard band will play. It's a very specialized piece. It's meant for uh, professional players. It is a very challenging piece. 
But by redoing it and putting a lot more emphasis on the alto and tenor voices, I changed the sound of how the band works. And there are some samples of that elsewhere on the channel uh, where you can see little bits and pieces of it, though I think the one sample I have, the composition tutorial, does not have any um, real clarinet parts other than just some little fiddly bits that don't really add that much to the texture. But so I use, use the alto clarinet, really as a, if a filler in the middle, uh, very much uh, like uh, some people will use horns to kind of fill in that middle. Instead, so instead of using a brass instrument to do that, I just get a woodwind instrument to do that. Um, so hopefully that's going to be a little bit helpful on some of my thoughts on scoring for the alto clarinet. I know a lot of people still do not like the instrument. It's not the instrument's fault though, it's actually a good instrument. I, I actually really like my personal alto clarinet. This is a, a noble and a bit of peg on, just need to get a better mouthpiece. But the instrument is not to blame. It, there's so many other mitigating factors in why people hate it, but it, it's not the instrument itself. It plays, and it plays actually fairly well, fairly well in tune. It, it's really, it boils down to a lot of the scoring. And if you can score the alto clarinet in such a way to make it important, to make it really bolster that middle tenor alto range of the band, you can really transform how the band sounds from being really thin and bright to having this meaty, dark sound. So, alto clarinet scoring. Let me know if you'd like for me to cover alto clarinet scoring in the orchestra. Again, that's a real whole different kettle of fish. So if you want me to talk about that, I can. So thanks for watching.